one, seven. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Bass and Bonsai and the final sorting out the tackle box video. This is going to be hopefully not as long as the longest, but not as short as the shortest, more than likely. So let's get right to it. What I'm pulling out now is, if you see over there, we've gone through all the boxes, um, the, our soft tackle boxes. Now we're going to go through all these baits you've seen sticking out the sides over the last several years. And they're still going to be sticking out the side, but hopefully not as bulky and taking up room. And yes, I still need to technically go back through here. Go. Some of these are junk. Some of them are good. I didn't take time yet to go through and see which ones I can, I can reuse. I, right? There's no need to just throw it away if it'll go right on to a, you know, whether it be a chatterbait or the wobblehead or even a shaky head or some kind of jig and still get use out of it, right? If it's still a good bait. Now, they, they start getting dull at a point. This one actually still looks very good. And, of course, some of the Keytech Crazy Flappers, mm, they still smell like success, so there's no need to throw those away, right? So we're going to go to first start, and I've already dug them out of the box. I'll pull them out of the side. We're going to go with, and these are all Guggen baits. And I'm not doing away with these because they're Guggen baits. That, out of what I have tested out of the Guggen stuff, the swim baits are actually legit, but I'm not really a big fan of the bigger swim baits. If you guys know me and the whole BFS stuff, right? But I am keeping these. The And when I bought them, I was just, you know, I kind of bought random ones and colors. Basically, I was trying colors really more than I was size. And I've come to the conclusion that I don't really like the 3 8s or anything bigger. I like these little dudes right here and smaller. So out of like the... You know, the Guggens or even, I think, the Strike Kings and a few other brands that make them. They come in these hard deals, which is actually, I suggest leaving them in there because they do keep them straight and they do swim a little better, for me anyway, I, I feel. So I'm keeping, uh, and I only, unfortunately, I only bought three packs of the 3.3s, but I am keeping these baits. But all of these are going bye-bye. I got, what, one, two, and some of them have one missing, some have a couple missing. Some have none. I haven't even, maybe, I don't even know if I use those yet. Uh, this guy's got two missing, so it's got five. Uh, and this guy's got a couple missing, so we've got five, five, all of them, all of them, and this one's missing too. So three with five and two that are totally full. Those are going bye-bye. Down the river to the Clinton area, right? I think Charles will probably buy these too, I would imagine. I mean, they're... $5.99 is probably going to be, I don't know, a dollar or two. Then he can sell them or do whatever he wants to with them. So we're keeping these, and while we're talking about the blister packs that actually are good and keeping in there these baits we just picked up from AliExpress, I'm going to keep them in these packs, and I'm going to try to remember to take them out and put them right back in, and they should last longer. If you guys remember, I I'd had them... And, and these are the same material that the Z-Man Elastex made out of. And if you can tell, the holes, if you stick them on a jig head, and the jig head's painted, what happens is that even the paint, the Elastex material works against the paint. The paint works against it or whatever, and it will start jacking it up. So the only downside to that stuff is you need to... Uh, Usually most of the skirt material it never seems to be an issue with and regular metal, but any kind of painted surface or other Soft plastics that aren't elastic like you can almost feel the tension before the two even touch like oh, ah. Anyway, don't do it So those two baits I may stick them right back on a chatter bait And use them. I probably need to go rinse them off. They probably just got a uh, dried out gunk on them so I need to still do that but we're keeping all these and keeping them in the blister pack so let me grab the next thing we need to go through I 
I grabbed. This is a perfect example why I need to go through this stuff. I had these stuck in in a different spot. And I believe these are the three seven. So these are the longer ones. And they're kind of a clear whitish. I don't know. I may... Rage swimmers. I may go ahead and hang on to those. But I didn't even know I had those until I just now dug all these out for the side pouch. So if you remember right, uh, one of the other things other than the zinkers that I actually like, uh, these swimming dingers, I actually like these. There's times when they work. Here's kind of a jumbo pack of who knows what. It's probably going to go bye-bye, but I was going to show you something. So i got a couple packs of the swimming dingers and that. Uh, black and blue There's all white and I should have a green and white. I'm gonna keep a pack of each of those See those swim baits? Nah, yeah, they're going bye-bye Don't like those these worms actually do work from time to time. They're the uh, Z magic, which I think is like Aaron's magic kind of thing. There's times when I like those worms I just I bought a pack of those and I do occasionally dig those out I one of those things where they were buried. So I keep some of my worms separate and I will continue to do that. There's kind of a baby bass color swimming dinger. So I'm going to keep that. Uh, I don't even know. I don't even know what is in here. Let's dig out these real quick. Take a little time. I think this is just a smorgasbord of different swim baits that I don't even know where they came from for sure. So actually... Some of them have bled through, but sometimes that's a good thing. So yeah, uh, honestly, these are all actually very good baits, but I think I'm just gonna put them back in there and ship that thing down the road. They'll, they'll all work, but I don't think I want it. And here's probably my favorite color. Now this one's got a little bleed off into, I like that color, that blue. I can't remember the exact name of that. But that is probably my favorite color all around swim bait. But I think I need to buy some different uh, packs of a few different swim baits. Let me just stuff all those back in there. Because these are the little bit, right? There's a size I like, and that's the size these are. They're a little bit longer. If you guys can see that. It doesn't look like a lot. That little bit of size difference can make a world of difference. So yeah, these are all that size bigger that, I mean, they'll work. Don't get me wrong. I'm kind of getting picky here, but I like that little bit size, whatever that size is. I think that's the 3.3 .3 or 3 inch or some of them have different lengths, but roughly that size. So these, they're going bye-bye. Every one of those baits though look pretty good. So let's get into this, and I'll talk real quick about, oh my God, is that a hook in there? Jesus. Who did that? That was not me. That will not catch a fish. Look at somebody who did that. That is funny. That is actually not a bad, it's probably rusted up, but that was all actually a decent shaky head. You got the kind of a flat football light wire can be thrown on very light gear and, and still get a good hook set but that is kind of getting old I'm throwing I'm pitching it can't remember what brand that was that dude's going in the trash probably let's pull this out and take a look I don't even know I think this was one of the last remnants of Emily she would kind of just start throwing stuff in packages that's a smaller swim bait I used to use these all the time. I think that's what this package started out as, were these, uh, they call them skinny dippers. Is that right? I used to, basically before I, the key techs and all those, this is kind of what I would throw. And it still works. And a lot of times I'd rig just with a, a EWG style, like a 3.0, 4.0, whatever hook, and throw them up into, before I started doing that with the zinkers, I'd throw these up in the nastiest of gunk like you would a frog. And just kind of pull them through and get fish that way also and this is i think strike king's version of it and you can tell this more ribbed on the uh reaction innovation ones but i've kind of gone away from all that stuff too and 
Yeah, there's a kind of hook. Sometimes you add a rattle, just throw it up in there and get all whatever. That's a touch too small of a hook, really. You would want at least the next size up. This hook can be used in other stuff. That's a that's too stiff of a for small as it is, it's a heavy gauge that not a hook I need. Brand new looking sharp. I'm gonna toss it in the sun. Somebody may want that hook. Charles may want it. I don't want it. I don't even know what that is. I wanted to think it was Z Man, but it's not. I don't even know where that came from. Anyway, oh, that did split. There's a BPS uh, kind of version, their copy, which actually worked pretty good of the uh, Sweet Beavers, but that one's pretty much toast. I'm going to throw it in the trash. You could glue it. You could go crazy if you wanted to try to save all that kind of stuff. But I'll talk about real quick. These are all going right in here. This is like a grab bag. And we'll just leave this in there. Now we'll throw this in our other bag. Here. Now there are a couple different colors you can get. You can get almost like a black with a little bit of blue fleck and then crazy blue fleck. But anyway, so we're saving those. Getting rid of this too. And I just wanted to talk about this thing right here for a minute. I think you can still get these just like this, but back in the day, my finesse was strictly a Jean LaRue hooktail worm like this, curly tail hooktail is what they call it. You can see it's stamped right on it, LaRue. But they went to this style, and these will still work. You'll still catch fish. It's a worm, right? It'll catch a fish. That is the uh, tomato red, not methylate, tomato red. But back in the day, if you guys would re remember, they used to have like almost ball, segmented like balls more or less. It was definitely way more like a ribbed effect. I felt it displaced more water, and I love those uh, tomato red worms. They quit making them. I ran out, couldn't get them. I come across these, and I bought like a crazy amount of bulk. Somewhere there was a huge package. I'm talking like I think maybe 500, like a crazy amount of these. And they still do work. I've kind of went away from using them. I do use the, a worm Z-Man or something in place of that. But you Texas rig one of those light, like you see me with these little bitty, you know, not much, just a little bitty to that or maybe to this. I think this is about the biggest I usually ever went. You know, somewhere like a sixteenth up to a quarter ounce Texas rig with that hook you saw me just throw away, something like that kind of hook. On, on still regular, pretty heavy gear, I, I would throw that. And just slowly drag it just maybe out in the middle of nowhere maybe right through grass or whatever when the bite was real tough and I could always pull in some bass kind of went away from that now but yeah old uh, sentimental worm that we'll just throw in this thing just to have it in our possession still right so I'm gonna put these up and then we'll move on I'm gonna put these I'm digging. Uh, I will tell you, I'm keeping the. I'll just pull them all out just so you can take a look at them. And there's these little deals. You guys have seen me hold one of these up. This little dude right here. They. I cannot get them to work. I don't know if they'll work like when tadpoles pop out or whatever, but probably not going to mess with those anymore. I'm keeping all these narrative baits. I'm getting ready to just toss them back where they were. But I do need to find more of these. Those right there, not fine, I just need to get more. Walleye Assassin. Uh, these, I like that style. Those are awesome baits. I just need to get a lot more colors. 
I like the Meredith baits though. Probably getting some from Big A's too. So I'm just putting these right back where they were. Not messing with any of those, they're all staying. On our swim bait front. And they seem to work like no matter if they're smashed or whatever. Now let's get into ones that I really need to thin down. Here's the packages that I have so many. I just have no clue, like I can't keep track of the stuff. Look at all these. I have too many that I hardly ever even use. I just occasionally dig in and try them. I mean, they do work. So let me get this little bait out of here. And then we're going to wrap this whole video series, or whatever you call it, up. I've got the batteries are loaded. I'm, uh, I've got my rods wrapped up. I'm ready to load up and go in the morning. I may just leave this stuff sitting here and I'll just put it up sometime later during the week. So let me finish up with our final. And here's the right baits, and I will try to get you the name of these. I like all of these baits. A little fuzzy. Yeah, they got the fuzzy, and these are little 3.25 little fuzzies. That's a smashing pumpkin color. I actually do like that color too. Almost all their colors, they have good colors. That is, a, is that sprayed grass? They call it Slayer, little fuzzy Slayer, but I consider that uh, kind of like sprayed grass, what it looks like to me. And so I'm gonna keep all these baits. These right here, like I've talked about, uh, Kush, which looks very close to the, uh, I wanna say looks very close. Are those the same thing? They look like the same bait, I don't know. I, I, but I like the color. Uh, this color right here, money. Kind of a green, blackish with blue fleck. Here's a color I like. I like those with the, uh, they call it tidal blue. I like that with, uh, oh shoot, the uh, shell cracker. I like that color. It goes good with those and some of those other ones. So is that all the riot baits? But I'm going to go ahead, I'm keeping, here's another riot bait. So I'm going to keep all the riot baits. Look, here's another right baits. Now that's excite. Excite baits. What are those? Raptor tail chunk spray grass six count. Uh, those are going bye bye. And there's a something else. I don't want those. I'm sure they probably work, but I don't want them. So we've got a mix match. There must be a uh, cool kiwi. If you guys see that name, cool kiwi. I don't even know which one in there is a cool kiwi color because we've got. Some key techs and everything else in there, but I'm keeping that pack. Those are staying. Let me set them to the side. I'm gonna end up keeping all these just because I like them. And here's the Bass Pro Shops that color in two different styles. Got their uh, what they call their swimming elite chunks. Those are the ones that I like that white one for the bedded fish and stuff like that. The swimming elite chunks, I like those. But then they're kind of a copy of the, uh, they call it a river bug. That's magic red flake, but that, and that's probably my favorite color of those. That's a, pretty much a copy, or close to a sweet beaver uh, in the smally beaver size. See those dudes? I've kind of tried, played with those off and on. That, that They're going bye-bye. I don't use them enough. They're small, but no. Got a pack left of... Crazy Flappers, that's a sprayed grass color. That color there isn't sprayed grass, but that is a color that I like that you've seen me, that one I just got, that I only have one left in the package. I like that color. I'm not really a fan of those. Eh, that's up to, that's up in the air. So we'll, we'll keep our true uh, Smalley Beavers. We'll keep our knockoffs. This isn't a horrible color. I can't read it. Pumpkin, white, I don't know what that says. There's our white ones. We're down to however many. I tend to reuse those. Those things do last. So yeah, there's the color I like. Green pumpkin chartreuse. In that size, I like those little dudes. We'll definitely keep that. And then we got, I believe that sprayed grass and the little ones. I kind of like the littler ones better for uh, 
I put them on like a little. Uh oh. That's you. <clears throat> Sorry, that's Eugene again. He was messing me, messaging me earlier about a tackle box he just got. I'll probably keep that stuff. There's a couple good colors. Reaction Innovations, Smalley Beaver, Sprayed Grass. All white. Eh, I do not see. I don't know if you guys can make out that white. I don't have near the luck with these white as I did with those white. So that's one package that's getting out of here. Probably keep that. Eh, swimming Elite Chunks in a green pumpkin. I don't think I... Something's got to go somewhere. Summer crawl. Yeah, the summer crawls aren't bad. I think... Mossy Melon. I think these two packs are going bye-bye. I know they're black and blue, but I just don't have the... Yeah, I'm getting rid of those two packs. So we did drop about eight packs, maybe. I think I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this pack. I just don't have as much luck with the bigger... I like the little crazy flappers. I really like those. I'm not a big fan of those, so we'll get rid of that pack. Let's see if we need to downsize more from there. You know what? Nah. We'll keep all of these packs. I do not need to buy any more of any regular type creature baits other than maybe the... Uh, Another pack of those ones. Uh, what did I just say that name was? It's right here. The uh, green pumpkin chartreuse, but those ones from AliExpress that are made out of Lastec. I'll probably buy one more pack of those and we'll be good for that. Yeah, I'm going to wait and go through all that stuff. I'm gonna Hang on, let me put these up and we're almost done. All right, boys and girls, one more huge assortment of base to go through. I'm just going to bring this whole thing over and pull one out at a time and either say yay or nay and then I'll throw them back in when I'm done because what we've got now is my huge bag of Z-Man Elastec. This will be a pretty simple process really. I am going to keep all of these. Uh, there's a Razor Shad. I've started using these and utilizing them on uh, chatter baits. I haven't really tried to use them as like a soft jerk bait fishing them by themselves. I may try that coming up. And of course, I'm not getting rid of, well, I can't say that 100%. I'm not getting rid of almost all my zinkers. I may get rid of a few. And this one right here is going bye bye. That is, for me, the worst color in a soft plastic. And I don't know why, but it just is. So that's going bye-bye. Uh, I'll be honest. A white worm, I do not like as well as I do uh, a few other type things. Like a white TRD. And I could cut these down, but that pack is going bye-bye. I've got white TRDs. This and a white, I think, will actually be good. Uh, there's some of just our regular worms. Finesse worms, new money. I will keep those. Can't go wrong with uh, Perfect Perch. That's a good color for the... That's a big TRD, but it still is a good bait. Technically, you could cut it down and turn it into a normal size TRD if you choose, but I will keep that. Here's a sprayed grass and purple haze just kind of thrown in. A sprayed grass package. And I will need to reorganize these. Now these are also very good. It's a black, blue, flake, blue. Kind of just a little touch different color. Uh, palmetto bugs. You guys heard me talk about those? These are going bye-bye. I've tried these several different occasions. Last forever. Doesn't matter because I honestly I feel they suck for, for uh, truly attracting fish. I'm not saying they won't work for me. 
I don't like them. There is a mixed matched bag of junk. And it looks like it's almost smashed. That's another reason I want to downsize so that I don't like nothing in there. Keeping that almost brand new or probably is a brand new package of uh, purple haze. And I guess for those of you who don't know, you're probably like, what is that? That's not a last tech. That is a uh, Strike King, but there for the longest time, and maybe still, because I still see these all over shelves, uh, made with a Laz tech, right? The Zero Z2s are the same thing. They were with uh, Z-Man. I don't know what's going on. If they still are, I couldn't tell you any of that stuff. But Usually that purple haze is easier to find in, in the Strike King brand than it is in its own uh, Z-Man brand. All right, the deal. There's a deal, and there's another deal over here somewhere. Let me stop real quick and just take time to... He looks totally worn out, but I'm telling you, he could be rejuvenated. Still got four deals. And I'm telling you guys right now, I know some of you, they do get faded. Most other baits, swim baits, even Elastec stuff, other than the the uh, zinkers once they get an old nasty look to them i'll throw them away but man these zinkers sometimes they just they work as good or better once they get that old nasty look to them it's hard to explain all right let's go to these uh charles actually i think may like these the long shots i kind of gave him a shot it was a long shot but uh i find it, since i'm definitely not a drop shot guy either i just they're out for me for me it's a no dog palmetto bugs also out. These guys, I tried to make myself like these too. Boar hogs, sorry, you guys are out. Awesome worm right there. Just a black and blue flake. Keep those, I don't use them near as much as I used to. Now I think I wanna utilize these more, the streaks. I think these may be even better than these. I'm, that's kind of what I'm gonna be testing a little bit, see if I like are they the same or which one's better? I think I may like the streaks better than the razor shads, but I think I've only got that pack. I need to get a couple different colors before I'll be able to really test them and see which I like better. Boar hogs again, molten crop, no thank you. Those are out. All right, let's, let's hurry up. Is anybody talking, saying something? Uh, surprised the palmetto bug is not a good trailer. For one, it's too big for a trailer, but I tried also using it by itself or as a trailer. I just don't like it. Like it. Thrifty Fisher, just watch your BFS vid. Nice catch, man. Thank you very much. Thrifty Fisher, just subscribe. Thank you. Spread the word, guys. Uh, I'm trying to grow the channel. I'm not really good. Let me let me be very honest. I consider myself good at fishing. I'm not very good at this whole YouTube thing, even though I've been doing it probably four or five years now or however long. I'm not the greatest at uh, putting myself out there, I guess, trying to, you know. I have a hard time just telling somebody that, hey, you know, because I feel when I do, a lot of times it's just one, in one ear and out the other. They're like, yeah, everybody's got a YouTube channel. No, seriously, I have a YouTube channel about fishing. It's got a lot of information. Oh, okay, I'll check it out. But anyway, yeah, spread the word. It, it's better you guys telling somebody about it than me trying to brag myself up. If you guys feel this is a good channel, spread the word, and thank you very much for doing so. Turbo Cross, mm, it's a no for me. I do not like any of the creature stuff other than in the little bugs uh, coming out of Z-Man's camp. These, I honestly, fatties, I haven't really fished them a ton. But I'm still going to say no. I do kind of like these. They are a different make. They're called bang sticks. They're basically a zinkers with like a hula type skirt deal on the end. They are not salted. They will, uh, I think they float. So they have a little different, I guess, look and feel in the water. So I, I, I do plan on keeping those. I think they're a little different. These little guys, I'm still trying to figure out if I like these on the, uh, on any of the little, uh, well, like here's one right here. The little micro or flashback minnows trying to get some Elastec stuff that'll work and just basically put it on and never have to change it out, right? That is an awesome color. Copper truce, worms, definitely like those. Keeping all that. Hang on. Diet Coke break. Smoke them if you got them. And I ain't talking about cigarettes. 
Let's go. Let me get a handful out here. And yeah, this box is deep. Uh, here's some bang sticks in a mood ring color. And sometimes I'll try to find these if, if they make a certain color in the bang sticks that they don't make in the zinkers, I'll get them. And I'm not sure about mood ring. I don't know if I've seen them in zinkers, but I saw them in these, so I grabbed them. And I don't, honestly don't know if I've, yet, if I've yet to use those. But at one time I couldn't find the June bug in a zinkers, but I'd found it in the bang stick, so I got that. Honestly, don't know if I've even tried those yet this season. And I like this color right here. What color is that? Bomba bug bang sticks. I do like that color. Here's a razor shad. IU. Got one of those on one of those. Keeping those. Another cannot have too many purple haze. Bags of purple haze. Uh, I've kind of gone away. This actually was not a color I used a ton. But the watermelon red flake was probably the first and the most, uh, I guess, efficient in producing uh, worms that I had used originally starting out with uh, shaky heads. These, uh, you know what? I got to thin the herd. I never throw that color. Like I just said, somewhere in here there's some like watermelon reds or the new monies or something like that. I feel I always throw over these. So I'm just going to throw those out. I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to. I'm keeping all my bugs for sure. I use that a lot on the uh, that bait right there, a little micro. And then here's a color I really like that I haven't thrown in a while. I need to get thrown these more. I, one time I really liked the Houdini. That color, I, I really like that color too. Had have had good luck with it. I mean, some of these baits, you just got to pick a color and stick with it. And it's like a confidence thing. It'll it'll come around. Uh, PB and J. Uh, Charles bought them. I was doing good with them. I bought a pack. I don't think I've opened this package up yet. And of course, the Gobi Bryant. And I still cannot figure out this, but these Gobi Bryants and the white ones also. The white ones I just tossed out. They are almost like they're made out of something even softer than all the other zinkers. I don't know if it's what why. But I feel like they'll start to mash easier than the other ones. And once you get them out, they almost feel wetter, if that sounds right. It's kind of hard to explain. But that color can be very good. Kind of like the deal. The deal or the that color works. Here is a perfect, since they're all stuck in here together. That worm right there, that hot pink. They call it morning wood. Just so, because I think a lot of people don't believe me. Finesse Worms Morning Wood. I do not think you can get that color anymore. Somewhere around here, I have, not in my tackle box, but I have baits set aside that I save. I need to actually find that, see if there's something I want to throw out of that, too, while I'm doing it. But I have a couple new packs of these. That color, there was a time when that was my go-to. Like I showed you that tomato red worm, there was a time when I threw that on a shaky head when the bite was, like, almost impossible, and it would just would always produce. Still made to this day. But then, in not in the finesse worms, but in the floating worms, they make this crazy pink one that is more like the TRD uh, bubblegum pink. I do not like that color pink. I don't even know why that one's in there, but anyway. So I always keep one pack of those just for when the going gets tough, right? I don't even know what this start. Watermelon white, but it's got a lot of other stuff in there. And the watermelon white sometimes starts bleeding into itself or other baits or whatever. And actually, sometimes I like that even better, but that, we're saving that pack. Here's another purple haze that there may be a couple purple haze in there. And I will sort through these at some point. I need to. Then the good old PB&J. If you guys ever remember me singing the peanut butter and jelly song, it's peanut butter jelly time. It was with these worms, just the finesse worms and the PB&J. Man, I'd get on a couple bites like... No, nothing was biting, and I'd catch like 25 bass on a PB&J worm. There's the ones I like. Watermelon red flake. Something about that extra red flake in there. I just like those over a regular watermelon. Then we got these uh, big TRDs and a perfect perch. I think those other ones weren't big TRDs. or were, were, I don't know. I like that color, so I'm saving those. I'll probably cut them down. I may try those regular like that. Old, old, every one of these looks almost old. There's probably a couple new ones in there. Sprayed grass. Saving all that. Oh boy, we're getting to it. 
I gotta start getting rid of something. These are, uh, there's copper truce. There's another color if I come across it that is like copper truce but different. Yeah, there's a, just a white, uh, white lightning TRDs. I guess I should keep those. Some more of the bugs and a black and blue. Black and blue bugs. The deal bugs. And I think the deal's the one I like the best out of the bugs. Can't go anywhere without those, right? Bubblegum. Pink TRDs. June bug bugs. And then, I'll be honest, these right here, I probably should not throw these out. But all these little worms, I keep telling myself, oh man, I'll get real finessey and I'll throw that little bitty. Like, because if a worm's shaky head will catch them, and even if that bite got tough, man, if you downsize the shaky head to an even smaller worm, you'll definitely catch fish, right? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that nowadays. I'm getting rid of those. Still going to try these out on possibly the bugs or the flashback minnows. I only got a few different packs. That is a good color though. I like that. The deal kind of reminds me of electric shad on a few other colors that you'll come across and I, that is also a good one. Baby bass color which that's what I call those one worms and the swimming dingers. Anything when it's green on top white on bottom I consider it kind of like a baby bass. These shiners they're not far from like a baby bass thing. I need to try to figure out and keep those. These would probably be perfect for uh if I do rig up what I call the double shot, and I'm kind of drop shotting, but not drop shotting, but I'll have one of these, say, rigged up on top, and then, like, maybe a TRD rigged up on bottom, 12 to 18 inches apart from each other, and just get them, right? The deal, you guys can tell by now, the deal is definitely a deal that I like. These little worms, again, going bye-bye. These things, there they are. Those, mm, never trick shots. Not a fan. They're going bye-bye. We're actually getting rid of quite a, quite a bit. It looks like we're keeping a lot, but we're actually getting rid of quite a bit, too. Okay, so what do we have here? All right, PB&J, of course, on uh, TRDs. Canada Crawl. Just for the fact that these Canadian geese have been throwing me a fit, Canada Crawl, you're out. I don't want you. I know, everybody's like, you're getting rid of TRDs? No. Right here. Drew's Crawl. I actually kind of like these. Reminds me of Houdini. So I'm going to keep those. Uh, these are, is this hot snakes? Yeah, hot snakes. I I kind of like that color. Uh, there's some more. P, P, B, and J, I know, but they're those little worms. I just don't find myself fishing those enough. Junebug, TRD's keeping. Black and blue, TRD's keeping. Gobi Bryant, TRD. I need to fish these more. That, see, the Gobi Bryants have that green and blue tint to them. They just, and they got that fleck. That kind of reminds me of uh, Big A's. Baits. It's just got purple. It's got like a gold. But I like the Gobi Bryant. Okay. Believe it or not, we are done. We are totally done. I'm keeping all those and I'm getting rid of... Let's just count them. I don't, I don't want to show you. We're getting rid of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 30, eh, we'll call it 30. We're getting rid of 30 different uh, soft plastic bags, counting those uh, Oh, what they call them, blister packs and the uh, Bass Pro stuff and then the Z-Man stuff. So that is a lot. 30 different bags are gone. No longer carried back and forth. And I'm telling you right now, I won't miss them. I will not miss any of those uh, soft plat. I just never use them. I don't use half of what you see me keeping, more than likely. At times I will, but I'll get, on a, I'll get out there and I'll start and instantly I start fishing. And within the first, say, 20 minutes to a half hour, I've already got in my head the few baits I'm going to probably be getting, digging out, and throwing. And so it's just a matter of finding those baits. And you can see, I'll still have an issue finding those baits with uh, even just this stuff right here. 
what I really need is this crazy cooler thing that like folds and just as you pull it out it like whoo, opens up into like a, almost like your the remember when you were a kid and you had those pop-up books like you just open it and it popped up and it's staring you in the face I need to figure out something like that for my uh, soft plastics which I I did and I got it from Emily I uh, I basically do what I watched her do and I thought it was driving me nuts because she was getting everything unorganized and that was, I didn't have near as many baits then though she just like dump it all out right behind you know in front of her right behind me in the boat just like <laughs> there went all my baits that I had organized and she would find which ones she wanted and she'd put them all back in and I'm like you know what that's actually easier than kind of having a at the time the system I had because it, it actually kind of sucked it took a while to dig you know kind of do this and I knew where they were but it was a matter of, you know thumbing through to find that pack pulling it out getting that making sure it went back in there it, it was actually just easier kind of like it is now just to dump them out get the one you need and I keep them kind of, I don't, I'm not at the moment right now, I'm just tossing them in. But I do try to keep them somewhat organized. And I try to keep the ones I know I'm going to use up high. And then the ones that I may get to at some point. It doesn't look like we shaved a lot of weight. But my spinnerbait box definitely fits way in and I shouldn't be smashing anything. So I'm not going to sort through all that. I am going to leave that white one out. I'm going to put them white ones either back in or toss them, whichever way. And how do I look at them? I basically look, I don't really even look at the appendages. Sometimes I will save one, even if it's missing a crawl, but you, uh, like a pincher. But normally I just look at the head. If the head looks like it'll pop on something and stay, even how this one's deformed, I've been out catching fish with that one, looking just like that. So I go by the head. See this one right here? I could glue that. You could, I've done it before. You could actually super glue that. Keep using that. See how it's fade. Look how it's faded. It's not even white anymore. It's off white, and this is turned. So that's junk to me. I will throw that away. These two though, they still look good. They're like filthy, nasty, dirty. So I'm gonna do a quick little thing here. Hang on. Hold your horses. Since my hands are already freaking horribly nasty. We're just going to give them a quick rinse off. And a quick pat down. And throw them right back in that box. Package. Before I get out of here. So yeah. They will still work, catch fish. You can't do this with a lot of baits. A lot of baits are, they just won't stick again. So you can probably tell, I don't even know how many of these are used. But they definitely are a tough bait that doesn't deform. I don't know how that one did that, but like the, they stay working. I, I do like that. Those BPS ones right there. The packaging I like. They just stay. So that is the only white pack of these I've ever bought. I've had for a, for sure a couple years. And they, they just still work. So I should probably go by. Look and see which other ones. I know I got like two or three other colors. And I probably should invest in a few more uh, maybe try those as like what I did with these but I do like these these are also uh, see like this one it's been on and off a few baits still has a I started to say something that sounded dirty still has a tight hole as far as something that'll go in there but awesome bait there's another one this one's gotten issues it gotten something the last tech must have touched it but yeah you can pretty much tell with just in a second or two if the bait should still be good and good to go there's another one just like the white one so I'll kind of go through these and then this is toast just for the fact I was just I actually saved this other day just to show you guys here's a perfect example oh hang on hang on oh my god how did I get this in here it's stuck 
I'm going to show you a perfect example of when and why. And I'll do it sometimes with Z-Man or just other baits. Because when I fill a bait, a soft plastic like this one is still going strong, but it's lost its shine. So I want you to look at these two, and hopefully it comes through the camera. So just imagine those going through the water. I mean, which one is going to stand out? You know, I think there's certain colors, actually a dull look, like you've probably seen hard baits. There's actually hard baits that you don't want to have that glossy look. You want a dull, almost a matte finish. But I think with most of this, like the purpose of this with the f flash and stuff in it, see how that's like gone now? So I think these get to a point, and honestly, the last, as I was using this, I felt like the bite went away with this bait, and I think that's why. It just got, it, it dulled itself out. It got nasty. And when you're wanting those flashy baits like that color is, there may be a certain color in this style that that would be a good thing. So I'm going to throw that away anyway and go to this. And that could be with any of these baits. You never really know. Usually like a darker color, black and blue or something. And a lot of these colors doesn't really happen to them like that. But I noticed some of the zinkers will do that, certain other baits, and all that kind of stuff. I just want to throw that out there. Something I've noticed over, I don't know, after a while of fishing, you kind of catch on to that. That the, Even though the bait may be working on a soft plastic, sometimes it's time to throw it away. Okay, I'm going to get out of here. This bait's toast, I believe. Yeah, see that? Done deal. This one's still good. That one, yeah, we're gonna throw these away. These are actually probably, yeah, I don't know. I probably should throw them away. They're probably still good though. These little key techs will last, outlast the bigger key techs for whatever reason. I think just they're smaller and less stuff to flop off, but that bait's actually still good. I'm going to do away with these. I'm, I tried to make myself use, and, and they sometimes will catch fish, but this one's still got a rattle in it. That's got a big rattle in it. Jesus. Because these were, I think, yeah, they have that, like, hole to put a rattle or something in them. See that? And I just, yeah, I don't know. I just didn't. Didn't like those as well as I thought I would. I've got a few more swim baits here that I have no idea where they go. I think they're just Meredith. I'll throw them in one of those Meredith bags. And I will say the Meredith, that plastic seems to not get deformed as easy. Like you can just throw them around. And they're cheap baits from AliExpress. I don't know. I wouldn't say 100, you know, real cheap, but they don't really deform that much and they still swim real good. So I definitely like the Meredith baits. Uh, we're going to be trying the big A baits. Uh, kept some of the Guggins. Uh, what else? Still trying to find a Z-Man like that. I like that size and style right there. You can go even a little shorter if you cut just a little the tip off. Shorten it up a little bit. I do kind of like to cut round edges. I don't like a real flat face going through the water. But I like these. Those is kind of what I've gotten to a point where I like in a swim bait like this size on uh, trailers now if I was going out and I was sitting out like you've seen uh, I would like this size or a true small or sweet beaver size the f is it three four point oh or whatever but that regular size if I was rigging them up for just other than a trailer but I like the smally sizes for my uh, bass trailers and then these littler guys work good on I may even try these I have, I have not I've yet to try a key tech on a on one of these uh, micro chatter baits. I just haven't done it, so that's a possibility. Something I need to do just to just to try it. They may not stick and last and stay on there worth a darn. That's why I kind of like the bugs. But if they really get hit, uh, it is cheaper to buy these. You get more for the money than you do the bigger size. But when you're Usually in a regular uh, chatterbait, three eighths, half ounce. The, these bigger Keytex, the next size up. The smallest ones are the ones I like for like on the real little bitty uh, that uh, VMC half moon jigs. 
they work pretty good. So anyway, yeah. Did I keep that those baits or did I throw them out? I don't even remember now. Which one did I throw out? I threw out one of the key tags, didn't I? Didn't I? Or did I? I don't know. Maybe I didn't. Yeah, I did. So yeah, I threw those dudes out. I'll put them back in here. They, these are still good. Like I said, though, I'm kind of went away from using the bigger key techs for virtually almost anything. I like the littler ones. I know I should. I should really keep these. You know what? I may. Because that is actually a good color. And these are good baits. You know what? I talked myself into it. I know. Give me long enough time, I'll take every bait I pulled out and put it right back in that freaking tackle box and be carrying it around going, just in case. But no, this one I will keep. I'm going to try to... That's, those are awesome baits, and that is a good color. No need to throw them out or sell them off cheap. Might as well just use them, and if they don't last long, I'm... I will not be buying any more of these, though, but I will try to utilize those and get them used. All right, I'm going to leave all this stuff. I'm going to get packed up. I will throw these in the packages where they go real quick. Hang on. I'm going upstairs, taking a shower, washing my hands first before I even take a the shower. Then I'm taking a the shower. Then I'm ready. I'm ready to go fishing. Let me check my weight. Oh, I did also go ahead... I made up, uh, I took the Big A's box, put Big A's on it. It's going in place of my other box that, uh, and I kind of sorted through what Charles kind of made me up two boxes. So I kind of went and redid that, but there's some awesome baits there and I'm going to get with him and get some other colors that I like, but this is just kind of what he sent us to test out. I really like, that's the color I was talking about the, uh, oh, that one bait I was showing you, the Z-Man, remind me of that color. And then some of these have a little touch more orange or not. And then there's green ones, these purple ones. Uh, kind of the pink TRD ones. Swim baits. Then he's also got a bunch of these littler baits. We haven't really even dove into yet. More like for true BFS or crappie fishing type stuff. We're going to get into that. But yeah. So that goes in place of what used to be. I kind of condensed the shaky heads and the basically a swim uh, yeah, jigs and all that kind of stuff. So that'll be in there. Because I was carrying just a whole other little bitty box with the two of those boxes of big eight baits. So I condensed it down to the ones I'm going to be trying out. So I'm ready to go. Ooh, I need those. I gotta put those. I need a good pair, some kind of needle nose or hemostats, which I have those also somewhere clipped on something. Don't need any. Don't need these right away. Anyway. Where does this jig come from? Oh, that's the one I tied. There it is. If you guys remember, I don't remember even which video that was when I tied that on because of the thing was getting nasty and I super glued it. And so it's good to go. Got just a hint of red in there, which won't hurt anything. Would only help, right? It's bleeding. A little jig. I could actually put, you know what? I'm going to do that. Which color would you guys have? This one? Stick this dude on it right here. You got a jig. I'm gonna go ahead and get it put on a pole and we'll just try it tomorrow. A little key tech. Crazy flapper action. Right? Look at that. Hmm? Tell me that won't catch some kind of fish. I'm not sure which one I'm going to rig that on. That's probably small enough. Check that. Now that takes a little pull, but that hook is not that thick a wire. I think that would almost any of my light rods. Definitely the... You know what? I'm going to either try this on the Tetan or probably the Karza just to try it out tomorrow. All right, guys, hopefully you liked the videos today. Man, it's been a day. My back is kind of sore. I'm going to go take some ibuprofens. I'm going to go wash my hands. Take some ibuprofens. Take a shower. 
and then I'm gonna relax and get ready for bed. Probably watch a movie, maybe. Uh, I weighed, I did, we filled this one completely up. I want you guys to see, it's coming out the top. We filled that completely up and I weighed this. It weighs over five pounds. There, it's over five pounds of baits. Look at that thing. All that, that is one of these pretzels. And these are, I love these pretzels. Peanut butter filled pretzels. You guys ever eat the, oh man, that's like a snack thing for me. I grab a handful, eat them. A couple hours later, grab another handful. So we've got like, I don't know, several of these empty. Well, this one's full now. So this will be going, let me get that bait out of the way. So we got that one totally full of just today. We've got this one, which is a little over half full from just a while back. We've got all these uh, packages of soft plastics. So yeah, a bunch of baits were spread out of here. You can look over here though, and honestly, you can't hardly tell a big difference. Other than that, uh, spinnerbait box sets a lot lower in that thing than it did, and hopefully nothing gets smashed. It was, it was an issue sometimes with stuff almost getting smashed, even though I just let the weight, I didn't like mush it, try to push it down, but sometimes the weight of that, because it was, it was actually loaded up with a ton of spinnerbaits. And I need to figure out some other way, but that just fits like right in there. It's like a perfect fit. So for now, that's just how I do it. So we did downsize, right? And this video is almost an hour. Jeez. Yeah, more variety of elastic baits than the average bait shops, what Jay said. I tried to try every freaking bait they have out. And as you guys have probably seen if you watch the videos... The Z-Man Crawls. Yeah, I've tried all of them. Most productive for them, in your opinion. For the bugs? I don't know. I like the bugs on the back of these little uh, micro chatterbaits. If Charles doesn't want your reject of Elastec bait, sell them to me. All right. I got you in mind, Jay. Jay says he breaks his plastics into gallon Ziploc bags in their original packaging by category. I see what you're saying. So you take one big bag, you put all of your zinkers in this, all of your worms in that Ziploc bag, all of your whatever, then you got, you just, that bag's marked with what it is, then you just got to find the color in that bag. I see what you're saying there. I guess I could try something like that. Yeah, the Meredith swim baits are legit. Good content. Uh, thank you, Thrifty Fisher, uh, newest subscriber to Bass and Bonsai. And no, Brew Tank Outdoors will try to tell you I do subscriber giveaways. I don't. He try, keeps trying to talk me into it. But no, sorry. That was in the first year or two of Bass and Bonsai. We're four, what, five years now? I don't even know. Maybe it's six. We're a few years into Bass and Bonsai. We, uh, we're just like riding it out. Uh, uh channel does uh it's doing good it's growing it's actually i want to say it's is it 75 new subscribers per month uh views everything's going up but at one time it, it was double what it is now with just a bonsai uh as it was growing we we didn't have near the subscribers but it was growing like crazy then i kind of stopped doing bonsai and went strictly to bass because this channel originally started out it was just Charlie Hicklin uh, YouTube, basically, right? I didn't even change the name yet. I just started making fishing videos on my phone, out fishing, had this weird mount chesty thing made up and decided I was kind of like bored with uh, just doing the fishing stuff. So I threw in bonsai. I kind of was just in the mood to do some bonsai trees and different stuff. Went nuts with that. Spent way too much money, too much time, too much everything. Bonsai no offense to old men, because I'm kind of getting there, 50 years old, is an old man's retired, you don't do a lot of other stuff, I guess. You have a ton of time, because bonsai sounds like it's simple. You're just watching this tree grow, right? But no, it's kind of like a time-consuming thing 
if you really get into it like I did, you're talking your soils, your several trees, you have to be around for there's certain times to do this, to do that. You guys know about anything that's living. Once you're dealing with a living animal, plant, or whatever, it's like a dedicated thing you have to go to. Fishing stuff, in all honesty, I could just put this stuff in the corner, walk away for a month, come back. Oh, there it is. Just go back to it, right? Bonsai is not like that. You, you know, just like you can't just get a fish tank and go, oh, I'm tired of these fish. I'll come back and check on them next month. They're all going to be dead, right, within a day or two, technically. Well, they say fish can go up to about a week without food. And most fish die from uh, being overfed, in case you guys didn't know that, uh, in the aquarium. Aquarium, saltwater and freshwater fish. Number one leading cause of death is pretty much shock from, like, say, the water changes or throwing them in something that's not, not even ready. But overfeeding is, like, huge. That little system needs to be, like, just barely too much poop, too much gone, right? The, you know what? The Too much poop, the poop hits the fan. This bait, I don't even know, is getting thrown in the trash. This bait is getting thrown in the trash. This bait is still good. This bait is getting thrown in the trash. It's missing an appendage. I don't want it. I'm going to mess with all, all that stuff. I'm just going to mess with later. I'm going to put those up where they go. Oh, there's a little dude. He needs to go somewhere. Crappie jigs, I got a ton of those. I got more crappie jigs than I know what to do with all that. Got a bunch of these. I need to get more. I think it's a white jig heads. I think I need a few more of them. All right, guys, we're over an hour. Set a record, right? Thanks for watching. I'm gone. Getting tired.